for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another Madden 23 update video for you guys today. Then be going over some rumored updates that should be coming very soon. And I'm also be going over player range changes, uh, which is something that I do every single week. But before I get into that, as always, if you guys want to see me continue with this series, whether it's uh, title updates that come out maybe once a month, maybe sometimes twice a month, or uh, player ratings updates which come out weekly, uh, hit the like button, let me know in the comments section, and please make sure to be a subscriber if you guys want to see me continue to do this. Other than that, I'm going to start off with the rumor update that's supposed to either have happened in the last update in November or was expected to happen uh, this update. Maybe it's going to be next week now. Uh, but there is a expectation at some point that EA is going to change the X Factors and the Superstars. Who has them? Because right now there's a lot of players that really are out of date uh, when it comes to X Factor abilities and stuff like that. And, you know, guys like Russell Wilson, who's having like an all time terrible year, I mean, he still has superstar abilities. Now, he still has Blitz Raider, Gunslinger, Dashing Deadeye, Agile Extender, Gutsy Scrambler. The guy clearly doesn't deserve it at this point. And he's not the only player that's like that. There's a lot of players. Um, that you could could argue definitely don't deserve to have uh, the X factors that they do. There's a lot of guys that aren't even playing that you could make uh, that argument, but I'm not going to go too too in depth because there's really only a couple players that stand out to me that really like should have uh, something and have nothing. Uh, and I'm also going to be talking about them when it comes to the player rating changes, and that's guys like Jalen Hurts and uh, Tua who are having MVP caliber seasons and are MVP candidates. Neither one of those guys have anything like that yet, uh, and they probably should at some point whenever they make these these changes. I don't know how many guys are going to lose theirs. Like I said, Russell Wilson will definitely lose theirs. If anybody were to get one, I would probably say it'd be Tua, uh, and I'll go over that in a minute too based off of the, the player ratings changes that I'm seeing. Uh, EA clearly favors him. Even though Jalen Hurts is having a monster year, he clearly doesn't have... Um, you know, EA's attention the same way he has the NFL's attention. Uh, and there's a lot of detractors. I mean, there's still a lot of people that don't believe in either one of them. Um, but at the end of the day, those are two guys that stand out that should definitely get some attention either when it comes to ratings or X factors, uh, which brings me to uh, the, the, the ratings changes. I'm going to go out. I'm going to start off with the going up every week. You guys, if you watch this channel, you know, I'm an Eagles fan and uh, I, I give you, I keep you guys up to date with, with Jalen Hurts uh, unrealistically low ratings, which, you know, it's par for the course when it comes to EA and their games. I mean, what do they care about realism when it comes to the games that they make? But at the end of the day, Jalen Hurts, and I've talked about, I start off with him every single week because I still feel like he's one of the most criminally underrated players in the game. He's only an A3 overall. Uh, last week, he had a monster game on prime time. He became the first player in NFL history to have 150 passing yards, 150 rushing yards, and two passing touchdowns. Nobody in NFL history has ever done that. He, uh, I think he was one of the, the first player, and I don't remember how long, um, to have 100 yards rushing in a quarter. Um, he also had, uh, he broke the Eagles rushing record and, and the Eagles have had, you know, so many great rushing quarterbacks, Randall Cunningham, Michael Vick, uh, Donovan McNabb, you name it. They've had some of the best rushing quarterbacks of all time. He broke the rushing record for Philadelphia quarterback. Um, so, you know, he just, he had a monster game and, uh, to see, you know, I waited, I was like, okay, he's got to have, he'll probably get a plus one this week because he's been getting a plus one just about every single week he, until they lost to Washington. He had a plus one every single week and he hasn't had a plus one since and the streak continues because he does not get a plus one this week either despite having over 300 all purpose or you know 300 total yards rushing and passing and another really good performance. He does get he gets nothing this week. So he's still in 83. Two got a plus 4 last week and I think he got a plus one this week as well. So it's it's crazy to me that um you know that that EA it, it, just like a lot of people were overlooking Jalen Hurts Say what you want. I mean, I know a lot of people are going to say rushing stats or understanding his passing stats or whatever. But at the end of the day, you can't tell me that, that breaking records like that aren't worth adding to his rushing statistics. So you can't tell me that that performance wasn't worth uh, an upgrade in either his break tackle, his... Um, you know, ball carry vision, change of direction, juke move, spin move. You could have upgraded any number of rushing statistics to give that would have essentially ended up in him getting a plus one overall at the very least. I thought he'd get a plus two after that performance. I thought that performance was amazing. Uh, but either way, moving on to the other players, we'll go over some. Another quarterback that's kind of under the radar is Trevor Lawrence got a plus one after leading a game winning drive. 
against, I don't even remember who he was playing. Maybe uh, it might have been the Chargers. I'm not really sure. But last week he led a game-winning drive to win a game. He also They also went for two, and, and then they won the game there. So he got a plus one um, for him. But let's go over some of the bigger star players because there's a lot of them this week. Justin Jefferson, who's just he's just playing out of his mind this, this year. He's got another plus one. He's the highest rated uh, change up to a 96 overall. And to me, he's the best receiver in the league. Um, the guy's just doing it every single week. I mean, if you can win a Super Bowl off of a receiver, uh, because obviously Kirk Cousins is just, you know, everybody knows Kirk Cousins isn't the guy you want uh, to win playoff games. But if they can win a, a Super Bowl, it'll be because he carries them there as a receiver. The next one up here is Mika Parsons, who's another guy who's getting, you know, defensive player of the year hype. Guy's got 12 sacks, which I'm pretty sure is second or maybe third in the league by now. Um, but, you know, he, he's just had, I think he's had like six or seven double digit. I guess it was six. Every game he's, he's had uh, a sack in, he had two sacks. So he had six games with sacks, which I guess you could look at it as five games with no sacks. But at the end of the day, uh, Mika Parsons up plus one to a 95 overall. Um, you know, he's a great player, no doubt about it. Next up, we have Lane Johnson. Definitely the best uh, right tackle in the league. A lot of people say he's the best tackle in the league. After the rushing performance that the Eagles had, I saw a tweet on EA's Twitter that said the entire offensive line of the Philadelphia Eagles all got either plus one or plus two. I'll skip ahead. Jason Kelsey's next up on the list. He also got a plus one up to 92. And they also had um, Miles Sanders. I'll jump ahead a little bit too. He got a plus two for his performance. He had 140 some yards. He, went, he got a plus two up to an 87 overall, which is great because I used the Eagles a lot. So now I'll, I'll definitely have, I think he got a plus one in speed too, if I'm, if I'm not correct. But either way, Everybody involved in that 363-yard rushing performance got pluses, except for the leading rusher, Jalen Hurts, who really wasn't necessarily benefited. You know, if you watch a lot of those runs, it wasn't really the offensive line that was doing it. It was him doing it a lot of the time, breaking contain. There wasn't, you know, a lot of blocking involved. There just wasn't a lot of contain involved either, and he was making things happen on his own. So, once again, it makes absolutely no sense, but I don't want to keep going on this tangent because I am an Eagles fan, so I could just be off base. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, next up, Derwin James, 93 overall at a plus one. Um, I, can't, I don't know what he necessarily did, but uh, definitely a great player. Jair, oh, Josh Jacobs, almost skipped Josh Jacobs here. Josh Jacobs having a monster season going into his free agency. Plus two up to a 92 overall. He leads the league in rushing right now, so I definitely agree with that. Jair Alexander, plus one to a 91 overall. Joe Burrow, plus one overall to a 91. Uh, another guy has been up and down. A lot of these names I feel like I see every single week, and it's just weird to constantly see the same names, the same names all the time. Tyler Lockett, plus one overall to a 90. Chris Lindstrom, plus one overall to an 88. Creed Humphrey, plus one overall to an 88. Brian Burns, I think he's got double digit sacks now. He's up to a plus one overall for an, uh, a plus one overall to an 87 overall. Kendall Fuller, who I think uh, was having a horrible year in Washington before getting traded to Pittsburgh. Hopefully, I'm not mixing up my players, but. Kendall Fuller, plus one overall to an A7 overall. Uh, Kenny Moore, plus one overall to an A6. And T. Higgins, plus one overall to an 84. C.J. Mosley also had a plus one overall to an 84. He's not on the list that I have here. Uh, going down pile, Justin Tucker. Here's a guy every single week I'm always, uh, for some reason, advocating for Justin Tucker to be a 99 overall. I don't know what happened last week in Baltimore. You guys have to let me know. But he got a, ni a minus two to be a 92 overall. I don't know what, uh, what he missed every kick. Saquon Barkley was a guy who was a darling for most of the year, rising up because he was one of the league-leading rushers, now down to a negative one, uh, 91 overall. Aaron Rodgers uh, got knocked out of the game, uh, but I thought he was playing pretty good up to that point, negative one to a 90 overall. Joel Batonio, negative one to a 90 overall. Offensive lineman Mike Evans, negative one to an 89 overall. Every week, it seems like the Buccaneers players are just going down, and it's because they're proving they're not really a Super Bowl contender this year, I guess. Uh, Roddy Hudson, negative one to an 87 overall. Alvin Kamara, another guy who's been going down every single week for the most part. Uh, down on 86, minus one down on 86. That guy is just a shell of himself, or maybe the Saints are. I'm not really sure, but they're definitely not looking too good. Kalias Campbell, negative one to an 86 overall. And Kenny Clark, negative one to an 86 overall off the Eagles, uh, pushed them all around the field, rushing for almost 400 yards. So if you guys want to see, I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see me, uh, you, you know, beat a dead horse over and over and over every week about why Jalen Hurts isn't rated higher, please hit the like button let me know in the comment section. Make sure to be a subscriber. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.